So if you are a small organization with maybe one or two employees, or even if you're growing, but just don't have a large marketing team and you know you need to implement marketing or email marketing, but don't think you have the capacity to do it, this episode is for you. My guest today is Andre Boychuk, and he is here to help share why we get in our own way when it comes to setting up email marketing, how we can support our teams, how we can get this done, even if we're only a team of one. If you've just started your organization and you're not even really sure where to get started, this is the episode for you. Andre is the founder and CEO for Flomium, Flowium, sorry, the Flowium Marketing Agency. And so he just has a lot of insights on how we can kind of put these emails into our flow, into our communication process, and what to focus on first and where to go from there. So I hope that you enjoy this episode. It was a super fun one to record. But before we get into it, this episode is brought to you by our March freebie of the month. And it is your checklist for emails pre, post, and pre, pre pre-event, post registration, and follow up after the event has completed. It's going to give you the list of all of the emails that you'll need to create in advance, some that you can even pre-schedule and get going so that you can relieve some of that press pressure and stress from the work that it goes into creating the event, the logistics. And you know, as it gets closer to the event, things get busy. And after the event, you're just exhausted. So let's get all these emails ready to go. So you don't even have to worry about it. And you can just hit that send button when it's time. So that is our freebie for the month of March. You can grab it at the firstclick.net slash resources that and any of the other freebies that we've launched this year, as well as some that have been on our website for quite some time. So I hope that you'll grab it um, and get your event going with these event emails. Um, I can't wait to hear how you go with this guide. For now, let's get into the episode. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Vidal Mulhern. Each month, we dive deep into a digital marketing or fundraising strategy that you can implement in your organization. Each week, you'll hear from guest experts, nonprofits, and myself on best practices, tips, and resources to help you raise more money online and reach your organizational goals. Hey, everyone. Please join me in welcoming Andre to the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Thank you for having me. So we're still carrying on in our month of email marketing, which is one of my most favorite topics. So I'm so excited that you're here because it's one of your favorite topics as well. Um, But from your perspective, I would just like to kick it off with kind of why email marketing um, is something that you love to do and why do you think it's such a powerful tool? It's powerful because you own the contact information of your user prospect, your customer, your donor, and you are in charge in of it and what kind of message you are able to send them there is no uh third party who's controlling what thing you can or cannot say you do not pay for emails you send out you can send three emails per day or one email per month and it will cost you the same yeah i love that it's so true so why do you think, uh, after what you just said, why do you think that so many people avoid it or think that it's not an effective method uh, of marketing? I think that social media, uh, the organic social media free one, and as well as a paid uh, advertising, this is like uh, all marketers talk about this and it sounds like very easy. You pay and you get something in return while email marketing is something that some people think it's very technical, it's hard to set up, but also there you need to put a lot of work in it to, because to create one post might like from like from different perspective, you might think it's a, a less work than create the email. So I think that's why. But uh either social media or email marketing is just two different marketing um uh stages. Uh, social media and paid advertising it's more about awareness email marketing is more about conversion as well as retention yeah so um do you kind of see them playing hand in hand or just to kind of put you on the spot here just for your thoughts but would you prefer to start with email marketing or do you think it just needs to go in line with your social media you should have both if you have if you have like extremely, extremely limited resources or no resources whatsoever, 
I would say do what whatever you need to do to to get money in. So if you need to do door knocking, do door knocking. <laughs> Don't focus on email marketing. But if you have a little bit more resources, set up some basic, basic uh, email marketing, maybe opt-in form as well as a follow-up um, you know, sequence. And but mostly focus on acquisition because mm-hmm. if people don't know that you exist there's no i mean there's no email marketing will not be good for your business yeah. organization so when we talked previously um you know you were kind of sharing how uh some really big companies do email marketing really well some really big companies don't do email marketing really well so you know resources are are a thing but um it's more just kind of about really building that foundational strategy right so what are some of like the common mistakes that you see people making when it comes to developing their strategy regardless of how big or small their list is or or their reaches sure I uh, just want to confirm, like your audience, mostly uh, somebody who works in a non-for-profit charity mm-hmm. sector. Is it mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so so quick story. Like back in 2022, when the uh, the war started in Ukraine, I started to volunteer for a non-for-profit organization, uh, helping building the medical kits for uh, defenders in Ukraine. Uh, so I didn't do anything professionally, but it's like I was trying to do something that I know. But my professional curiosity kicked in and I started to research what other big, big non-for-profit is doing from email marketing perspective. So I selected 10 biggest one in US, like Red Cross, uh, what the other, I like the one of the biggest one. And only, I believe only five of them Sorry, only two of them have a very clear opt-in, opt-in for emails, for newsletter, for some kind of updates. Only one of them had some kind of lead magnet to kind of uh, to provide some incentive for people to opt into their list. And all others just offer like right from the beginning, you just visit their website and they're like donate. It's like uh, we always say it in our company, it's like proposing on the first date. Mm-hmm. You don't know nothing about this organization, but they asking you for money right away. Uh, it might it might be too too aggressive. Um, so uh, I, I notice that people, the biggest mistake, people not collecting their contact information in their emails. And second, uh, which goes hands in hand, is not, not providing some value. The best they had is sign up for our newsletter. So right now I'm 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 fractional CFO of uh, CMO uh, for another Ukrainian non for profit, and I'm doing this pro bono as a volunteer. So we offer like ten ways how you can support Ukraine for free, and it's a simple checklist, a, a simple ways how you can support. It's one pager, but people who visit the, our website they're more likely to opt in versus like donate right away and when they opt in we have different kind of sequences to nurture them before asking for a donation so this is the biggest thing that i see in non-for-profit sector there's no good way for for people to opt in yeah i see so often on nonprofit websites it just says sign up for our newsletter and people yeah. don't like to do that because they don't know what there's no expectation. What am I getting? What are you going to start sending me now? You're just going to ask me for money all the time. So um, I think that's great. And lead magnets are something that's so popular and common in all other sectors of, of the business space, but not in nonprofits, because I think we tend to look at it from, okay, you're here to help us, not how can we help and, and support you. Yeah, so I I had that because I was trying. I'm still working on the article to to write about this. But feeding America, mm-hmm. they have a good um, uh, lead magnet. It's, it's like get tips on easy, and it, I lost it. <laughs> get tips on easy ways to fight hunger as a family, and you when you enter your email, they get the guide. They delivering you the guide about this uh, this like. Um, tips with those tips so mm-hmm. this is a great way it's online with their mission and when you download this guide 
I, I bet they will start to follow up, nurture you, and eventually ask you for money or donations. So if you're a smaller organization, you don't have a, a huge team and, and you're hearing things like guides and downloadables, and we might automatically feel like it has to be some super fancy over-designed thing, but you know, we can start off with something super simple. It's more about the quality of the content, right? Than, th than it being kind of a flashy designed Correct. piece. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> listen. Like we want, I think all of us wants to be like perfectionist, like so it looks beautiful. But listen, when they opt in, first of all, they are not like opted in, downloaded your guide and like, oh, it's terrible design. So let me unsubscribe. I don't think it will happen. And people don't think like that. So it can be simple uh, PDF, Word doc. Word doc was a checklist. It can be just nicely formatted or not even nicely formatted just list of things that you want to share with them i don't know like how to fight hunger how you can support your somebody who was just abused how to support somebody else so just some maybe what is your cause what is your mission to help was that's why you're raising money but maybe you can provide the tips and techniques strategies how to do the same thing for free and use this as a lead magnet on your website. Yeah, so let's talk about follow up from that because you kind of mentioned it briefly, you know, once somebody opts in, you know, hopefully you're going to be following up, but what might that look like? Because we want to have that all kind of built in that whole journey kind of built in before we kind of publish this lead magnet. So how might we want to follow up with people immediately after donate or after they um, get this downloadable? So, uh, I mean, if, if 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 they opting in for downloadables, like first if you need to send them confirmation email, like, hey, thank you for uh, downloading this guide. And here is a link for the guide in case mm -hmm. you missed it. So like just provide them the guide. But uh, if we're talking about the general follow up, first it needs to be like welcome email, welcoming people to your organization. And it would, it's cool to have a, like letter style email from uh, the founder or the president of the organization, tell them what are the organization about? What is your mission? Where's your values? Share maybe some backstory, like how it was created. Again, no crazy, you don't need to do crazy design. It's simple text-based email, but includes those, those points. And very important to have links back to your website. So people can like, if it's story, you can sh write a short blurb and say, like, click here to read the full story of our organization. So this is email number one. Email number two, uh, typically, it's like we would like to ask, uh, ah, typically, we like to share some kind of testimonials. Maybe you have, like, some success stories of how your organization impacted people's life or maybe um, uh, testimonials from other donors oh i donated and they use my money to do x y and z then uh, email number three can be something like hey follow up. give them options how to follow you on different social media and it's very important not just to provide the list of social media but tell them if they follow you on instagram they will receive this kind of content if they follow on youtube they will like find different kind of content so just give them idea why they should follow you on different social media because it's not like you should not post everywhere the same thing um and then when you have some basic nurturing maybe talk about some of your projects some some of your initiatives and maybe email number four or five then you start to ask for some donations mm -hmm. yeah and how many days in between these emails do you recommend i mean i know there's a bit of testing that goes into all of this but do you have a general rule of thumb of where you start yeah so typically between two to three days between them so the first and second can be one day apart but the, the other one two to apart mm -hmm. and i love that you said remember they just oh sorry no go ahead there's a bit of a delay <laughs> no yeah sorry no, no, I, I said, remember, they just found out about your organization. They just uh, opted in. So at the beginning, you want to be faster. Like, so the shorter delay to communication, and then you can make those delays between email longer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I love that you said plain text email, uh, because I think a lot of times, some one of the things that holds people back is they think they have to have these beautifully designed 
emails, but, you know, simple plain text feels more personal, feels more connected and, and they're easier to put together, right? Yeah. So yes, it's, it's, it's extremely easy to put it together. You just need to write it up uh, like in a matter of like five, 10 minutes and it's ready. You can set it up when you have more resources in the future. Is there, you have a designer uh, or somebody who knows how to set up, set things up. You can improve it, but today start simple and text-based emails doesn't mean it's bad actually it's even ba sometimes even better than um, well-designed emails because they get there's more chances they get they will get into the people's inboxes so we have a one follow-up sequence in our, our organization that we set it up it's a 32 days there's 32 delays from the last donation and uh, and in that email, we say something, hey, uh, such a such name, uh, we, uh, my team asked me, asked me to follow up with you uh, in case you have any questions. Here's our latest report about our projects, blah, blah, blah. And shockingly, people are responding to that email like I wrote that email. You know, like they are responding like, oh, I don't have any questions or thank you very much for reaching out. They um, they're responding and to if people respond to your emails from email marketing perspective it's very good for your deliverability yeah that's awesome so once they're done with that welcome sequence and they're going into just your general email newsletter um so i want to ask you know Correct. kind of consistency wise like you know how important is it for us to also be having that general newsletter be going out regularly if we're having people opt into our email, because I think a lot of times people will opt in and then they don't hear from you again until you are asking for you're in a fundraising campaign, right? As opposed to kind of sharing updates along the way. So my recommendation, even with very limited resources to do it once, once a week, even mm -hmm. if you, I don't know, like a, a organization of one, do plain text, plain text email each week. I think there's a lot of things going on in your organization so you can share some things it can be bullet point format or maybe in sections let's say if you have five projects or three projects maybe have a uh, sections in your email and just update on each project but do it on the weekly basis and um, it would be easier then when you do fundraising to ask for money because you're like giving 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 then you're asking you're sharing, 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 you're asking versus that silence and then like, hey, we're doing fundraising. Can you please donate? Yeah, I agree with with that. And I think um, also just that one topic, one email, when you're doing it weekly, you don't have to share everything all at once. You you will find that you have little snippets of things that you can share that are exciting um, I feel like once you start getting to right. that rhythm, you actually feel like you have more than you have time to even say. And those weekly emails become pretty easy. So this is what we do. Uh, so because we are sending uh, two emails per week, uh, but we do it in two languages. So we have one in Ukrainian and one in English. So this is what we do. So we are posting on social media three times, sometimes five times per week on social media. So we what we do, we just take uh, three of the best or two of the best posts that we believe and just include it in the newsletter. So there's no extra work. Maybe sometimes we put uh, like customize um, the intro to the email, like, hey, this is the latest updates for this week. And then putting that information as blocks. Oh, so repurposing content. And you could do it the other way around, right? If you prefer to write emails first, you could write your emails yeah. and then create your social media posts from that as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, getting people into your list is kind of one of the things that you say is something nonprofits aren't doing well. Is there another kind of mistake or thing that you see um, that organizations could improve on? Uh, that maybe they're not thinking about uh, in terms so i see that a lot of like uh, charities non-for-profit organization they do go okay to good job in terms of sending out newsletters uh, 
Oh, let me step back. So there's two parts. There's email marketing, but there's two parts. There's automated, uh, automated emails, like behavior triggered emails, as well as campaigns, newsletter, broadcast. Broadcast, this is that we're sending manually each week, each month, each day, uh, how often you want. We select a segment or list of people and we are sending them uh, one or few emails. Behavior trigger emails, automation, flows, sequences, they call differently in different software. Uh, it's uh, This is, I, I personally see and believe that non-for-profit are weak in this in this area. So I do see some non-for-profits, they have welcome emails and we just discussed welcome automation. We just discussed the welcome and follow-up, like welcome, social media, testimonial, ask for donation. So they do have that, but they don't have the rest. I'm giving you a few examples. Somebody started started donating and I don't know, like their phone died. Uh, their kids distracted them. Something happened. Credit card didn't go through. So they have a very, they committed to donate, but something happened and they couldn't. But you have their email. So now you can follow up with them and say, hey, uh, it looks like you tried to donate, but you didn't donate. And that kind of follow up will generate extra donation to you. Mm -hmm. So it's not lost donor. They can still donate you. So I don't see those kind of automations. Or somebody visiting your website and checking specific initiatives or checking your reports or checking donation page, but they didn't donate. Also, you can follow up and say, hey, do you have any questions? Uh, also, the automations I told you about, like somebody donated 30 days. Again, you need to understand, uh, calculate, like how often do people donate to you? Is this like every 30 days, every six months? and then set up a follow-up sequence. Like if they did not donate for 30, 30 days, maybe on the 31st day, follow up with them. Hey, do you have any questions? Uh, mm -hmm. Can I help you somehow to, to start that conversation? Um, so those are just examples of some uh, automation that I don't see in non for profit Or one more very important, when they donated, when they donated, first of all, you can with email marketing, you can automate the tax receipt. I think this is the biggest thing in non for profit, like to, to deliver those tax receipts. Everybody's waiting to end to end of the year to do them. But honestly, with uh, with email marketing, you can do it with each donation. And people can have those nice, nice tax receipts. Mm -hmm. And after they donate, to have another like nurturing series to to to, to retain them. Yeah. And I think um, if you're listening to this, because those are all great ideas, there's the two things that I would say is one, when you shop Amazon or whatever, pay attention to the emails that you get, like, you know, anytime you're shopping online, right, that those abandoned cart emails, those, hey, you purchased this, now you might like that, like use those that you get in your inbox to like spark some creativity and how you set this up. But if you're like, there's how would I even know where those people are? Um, I mean, just check in with your CRM, check in with your email service provider and and ask them how they kind of have those. Some some are better at, than others at providing those features. Um, but I think, yeah, what you're saying is great. Just ask um, your tech and figure out what capabilities you have. And then it's automated and it runs runs in the background. Right. Yes. yes. You yeah. need to set it up once. Yeah. Well, set it up once, but I would also recommend, I mean, I maybe, I don't know how often do you recommend people go through and review their automations to make sure the language is still good? Like, do you typically do that on an annual basis or like, you know, on a quarterly basis, go through to make sure that nothing's changed in your sequences or in your, in your um, automations that might need to be updated? Yeah. yeah. So again, I'm always thinking to what you said before, like to when you have limited resources, you know, then forget it. It's nice, nice, nice theory, in, but it doesn't always work. So from technical perspective, set it and forget it. But from marketing perspective, from messaging perspective, of course, you need to uh, review it constantly, maybe every three months, uh, maybe often. And also you need to check the analytics. Let's say if some emails does not perform, you need to go back and see why they're not working. Maybe 
the link is broken or maybe messaging is not right or something is off so you need to split test uh, and um to figure out what's going on yeah yep and most platforms will allow you to do that pretty easily these days which is nice of course yeah um, well, I think you've given people a lot of things to consider and a lot of things to go to the drawing board and get creative with and have fun. Um, my kind of last question is really just from a messaging and storytelling perspective. Um, like, what are your thoughts on how we write the emails, like being more conversational versus being super polished and buttoned up and professional? Like, should we be writing these in a way that's kind of engaging with our people? Like, Kind of which versions, and again, I know you need to test, but which versions do you find kind of tend to get better replies? Uh, when it's written from the first person and it looks like it's written for you, not as a general marketing message. So th th there's two types. So when you do the newsletter, newsletter is more like a report or like update what's going on uh, with uh, with your organization so it's it can be be a little bit more polished uh but honestly like i, I english is my second language and i'm not listen it's my 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 grammar is not the greatest so i use chat <laughs> gpd to fix my grammar i use chat gpd just to proofread my english uh but uh it's more kind of official, more like anal not analytical, more official, like, hey, this is what happened for this week. But when you create those automation sequences, I would recommend to do the storytelling. I would recommend to do it from the first person, like like you wrote writing the email to your friend uh, to be kind of professional, but at the same time casual. So people can feel uh easy to to kind of to reply to your email so they don't it's like oh it's like too corporate or too technical mm -hmm. they are like oh can they reply and say thank you thank you for what you're doing or i have a question yeah um my favorite replies are um speaking of grammar and typos uh, my favorite ones are when people write me back and they're like hey do you know there's a typo in your email and you know i used to <laughs> you know sometimes that you that it doesn't happen all the time but I even those opportunities are like, oh, they took time to write me back. So I can now just start a conversation and kind of have fun with them and, and see where see where it goes, because they would have never written me back otherwise. Um, but sometimes those mistakes and things like that, that happen, you feel bad when those emails come back to you. But it's an opportunity to have a conversation. So just like you said at the beginning, perfectionism yes. can stop us from doing a lot of this stuff. Um, but it's just about getting getting going. I agree. I agree. Um, so any other last words or kind of tips or inspiration to get people going in email marketing um, that you want to share before we wrap this up? Sure. So here's uh, some, if you're still thinking, should we do it or not do so? Well, here's general rule of thumb. You will get on average between 50 cents to $1 for each email each recipient so if you're sending to thousand people one email it means you will get between 500 to 1000 dollar donation and if you send to the same list next week you should expect the same so think about it and uh, calculate the return on investment but it's very lucrative marketing channel and I strongly recommend to invest either your time or your money or like like some resources like and dedicate dedicate something to this and develop it in your organization because it will be impact impact impactful for you. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Uh, well, Andre, thank you so much for taking time to join uh, join me and share your insights with our listeners today. If people want to connect with you and learn a little bit more about your agency and your organization, how do they do that? Sure. You can go to Florium. It's F-L-O-W-I-U-M.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. First name and last name, Andre Borjo. Yep. And we'll link up everything in the show notes for this episode at the firstclick.net slash 249. Uh, so you can grab all of that there. Um, but thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Bye. 
Okay. So what do you think? Are you inspired and ready to jump into email? Even if you thought before you didn't have the time, energy, capacity, whatever to get it done. I really hope that you do because as you know, email can be such an important and impactful part of your organization and your business when it comes to communicating in mass with your donors, sharing your impact and getting those conversions and raising more money. Now, obviously email isn't the only thing out there, but it is really critical and important. So thank you for taking the time to join us this month as we've been talking about email marketing. I hope that you are inspired and excited to kind of jump in and or re-engage with your list. For now, make sure you subscribe wherever you've listened to this podcast and make sure you grab the show notes for this episode at thefirstclick.net slash 249. I can't wait to see you in the next one.